Traders, how are you? Marcello, founder of the Day Trading Academy, co-founder of Speed Up Trader. In this week's Weird Cap, we have food just going through the roof in price. We have biblical hail knocking down roofs in Oklahoma and Texas and a lot, lot more. So stick around. So overall for the week, um, we started this this week essentially was earnings week. We had a ton of companies that were were reporting their earnings. 30% of the S&P 500 has now released their quarter one reports. A lot of blowout earnings, especially for companies like Google and, you know, the, the big names, Amazon and all these companies. 88% have topped expectations, but only 57% saw an increase in their stock. And obviously this has to do with a lot of people, a lot of analysts and investors talking about how overvalued a lot of these stocks are. I did a video on, for example, why Bill Gates is selling all of his stocks. Actually, I should say sold all of his stocks. Even Warren Buffett has sold over $29 billion of his stocks, especially last year. Warren Buffett kind of did it on the sly, right? But that video should be coming out this week for you guys to be able to explain because the direction that we're heading economically is not bueno at all. Other than that, you know, the situation with the stocks not going up as much, even though they had blowout earnings, obviously we have inflationary fear fears. I want to, I want your feedback. If you guys have seen the price of food it has just exploded. For those of you guys that either live overseas or live here in the U.S., leave me a comment. See if you actually have actually seen the difference. I think the inflation is probably at, I would say, they're only reporting, you know, one, two, three percent, but I think it's actually probably at about 20 to 30 percent, right? I would go to the store, I'd buy sausage. That went up by 15 percent. The bag of chips that I used to buy, that went up as well. So I'd love to hear if you guys are actually seeing the same thing as well. Overall, for the week, markets were mostly lower. The S&P 500 was the only one that was positive, but it was it was marginal, just 0.02 percent. Overseas market news, the, the European markets were mostly mixed. The, be, the biggest one there was Spain. It went up by 2.27%. Latin America and Canada, mostly lower as well. Canada was up 0.21%. Middle East and Africa, that one was mixed as well with Saudi Arabia being the biggest winner there at almost 3%. And then in the Far East, Asia and Australia, that was mixed as well with Thailand being the biggest winner there at 1.9. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news, not a lot of news with the cryptos this week. Dogecoin did start to go up. One of the videos I'm going to I'm gonna try to do for you guys as well, because I have to do a better job of doing the videos in English instead of in Espanol, is um, the, the what happened with Dogecoin, right? There's a lot of little lessons for those of you guys that want to learn how to invest or trade. There's a lot of little lessons in that price action that I wanted to do. And now Doge is finally starting to creep up again. This week we had Mark Q. Cuban, which if you guys don't know, the billionaire investor of the Dallas Mavericks, the basketball uh, franchise there in Texas, they uh, he went on the Ellen Show to talk about Doge, and then Elon Musk is going to go on SNL, and he talked about being the host of Saturday Night Live, and he called himself the Doge Father. Doge! Uh, Bitcoin up for the week, 13.19%. It's almost at 58,000. It is up over 100% in 2021. In commodities, and, and this is where I'm talking about the situation with the, the food prices, right? Corn futures, highest since June 2013. There's a lot of dryness in Brazil and also a cold spell in the United States. If you guys remember, the freezing temperatures knocked out a lot of the wine grapes even in France. The world's two biggest corn producers, which are the United States and and also Brazil having those problems. There was actually a news report that I read where a lot of the rivers in South America, places like Argentina and Paraguay, where they transport a lot of these things, right? Because it's in the interior. Paraguay is a country that's landlocked in the middle of South America. So they have to ship these products via boat, right? Kind of like the Mississippi River, for example, in the US. And so the the rivers there's been so little water that the, the 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 boats are getting just stuck in the middle of the river and paraguay has actually asked brazil to be to release water from a dam the itapau dam to be able to go ahead and get more more things and move in there, if you know what I mean. Other than that, wheat hit a seven-year high. Soybeans touched eight-year highs and skyrocketing price of lumber. I'm sure you guys have seen it, especially for you guys buying homes. If you're going to buy a new home this year in the United States, the cost of that house has, has gone up by $36,000. Existing homes, the added price on those is about $13,000. And we're already in a very, very, very hot bubble in real estate already. Other than that, crude for the week went 
went up 2.31% at 63.58 in the US. International crude, which is called Brent, went up by 1.72% at 67.25. Copper, which we use a lot of it with the electrical things. And, and you know, you can see everything is just exploding to the upside, right? This is why I kind of want to know if you guys have seen the increases in price or maybe if it's just me, right? I go to Chipotle, for example, and I see less chips in the bag. See what I mean? Kind of those little things that they do to not raise the price, but you're still getting less. We always get shafted, don't we? Uh, copper prices hit a 10-year high. It's almost hitting $10,000 a ton, which is... Um, the record that we saw about a decade ago, remember the decade was a 2008-2009 crisis. This is oversupply disruption due to the fact that there's a lot of protests in Chile. Chile is one of, if not the top producer of copper in the world. And actually, we have another situation as well with uh, the concerns about the, the recovery, right? Even though we have a lot of people getting vaccinated, we have a serious situation in India where, unfortunately, because of the COVID and their, their lack of good health care, in addition to that lack of good nutrition, they have so many deaths now that they're literally burning bodies on the streets just in front of your house burning a body it's just it's just it's sad precious metals for the week gold went up 0.04% to 1777 while silver went down 0.23% to 2601 and there is a growing concern as i just mentioned about the inflation and the weakening US dollar which is pushing a lot of US states to recognize gold and silver as legal tender the US constitution does allow a state to give the citizen the ability to settle their debts in gold and silver and if we have a situation where a lot more states move in that direction, which some already have, that could add a lot more demand for gold and silver. In financing and banking news, we're going to have a new interest rate that's going to replace the embattled politically embattled LIBOR rate. This is going to affect all of our all of our uh, financial lives, everything from mortgage rates to credit cards to everything. Economic news, Germany saw businesses... Business morale improved slightly in April. Remember, Germany is the fourth largest economy in the world after U.S., China, and Japan. Largest and most important economy in Europe. They're getting a third wave now of COVID, and this is affecting a lot the situation with the semiconductors. The economy is effect being affected by the third wave of COVID and the semiconductors. In Taiwan, for example, there's such a bad drought in Taiwan right now that they're redirecting the water from the growth producing the farms to be able to go ahead and help the semiconductor industry because South Korea and Taiwan are two of the biggest hubs for the semiconductors. Now, one of the things as well that's really interesting that I read recently was 90% of the lychee, which is a fruit from Taiwan, is 90% reduction in the production of the lychee fruit. Like we're, we're not only walking into the US dollar devaluating because of all this money that we're printing, we're also walking into food shortages, period, between natural disasters and everything else. And I think the next 10 years, it's going to get worse. We're going to have a lot of social problems. We're going to have a lot of economic problems. We're going to have a lot of um, uh, natural disasters, environmental problems, right? Not to say you can't uh, benefit. I don't want to say benefit in a good way against all these bad things, right? But there's always a way to make money. And some of the times, the best times to make money, especially in the markets, is when there is a crisis. So consider that as well. I'm letting you guys know to be able to go ahead and position yourself in the right direction, right? But remember, this isn't financial advice. I'm not a trading advisor. Don't trade people's money. So make sure you do your own research to do the best thing that's for you. Other than that, consumer spending activity rebounded in March. 4.2% after falling in February 1%. This mainly has to do with those, that stimmy money that, uh, you know, the Biden taxes, for example, the tax increases that he's spending. I don't think that's going to destroy the economy per se, because I think the stimulus actually already did that for us, right? And everybody's hiring, but nobody wants to work because of the stimulus that they keep getting and they keep trying to extend it, extend it, extend it. And one of the things that's really interesting is the, the, you know, some, some people might dismerit a lot of the people that work at places like Walmart or Taco Bell or all of these places. But these kind of low-end jobs are actually what power our economy, right? The foundation of our entire society sits on top of these people who load trucks and drive the semis and, you know, uh, serve the food at Taco Bell that we go to eat or another restaurant, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's definitely an issue that, um, you know, things aren't headed in a good direction. Let's just put it that way. In corporate news, Boeing posted a wider-than-expected law loss and that caused their shares to drop 2.61%. This is the sixth consecutive month that the revenue is down, but they are saying that they have seen an improvement of deliveries. And now with the vaccinations getting underway, they're expecting 2021 to be the year where they have their turning point. 
Tesla shares surged 4.79% after they reported their earnings. They exceeded their expectations for sales and deliveries, but the only problem is, is they're not making any money. So the more cars that they deliver, the more money that they actually lose. And the only reason why they're making any money is because they're selling carbon credits, right? You have these companies that want to be carbon neutral. So they go out and actually buy credits from Tesla because Tesla has an ex- excess of, you know, what the, the government and everybody wants, which is the, the, the to zero out the carbon based co- economy means of scales at the right word but you know for example I'll give you I'll give you an example there was a boat that sh- was shipped recently that they said was quote unquote carbon neutral I'm just looking at it looking for it here in my notes and they basically what they did was is they planted a bunch of trees in Mexico to be able to zero out their carbon emissions to be able to make sure that they were carbon neutral. So that's this is kind of what people look for Tesla and pay them for since this is kind of the direction that we're moving economically and politically as well with the laws that are being set up. Shares of Twitter plunged 15.16% after a rather tepid forecast and not very good news in regards to their numbers. Their numbers fell shy of 200 million new active users, which is about 199 million. I don't know about you guys, but I don't really use Twitter anymore. It's just literally like a big political fight. Not really that helpful anymore. Let me know if you guys use Twitter there in the comments. I'd be interested to know that. In trade news, the International Energy Agency is saying that the worldwide sales of electric vehicles surged 41% in 2020. Total global car sales fell during the pandemic. So even though total car sales dropped, electric vehicles actually surged 41%. And the expectation is that the sales of EV vehicles, electric vehicles are going to continue to increase, especially since a lot of governments are continuing to move in that direction. One of them, for example, being Germany. The highest court in Germany is stating that they're going to expand the 2019 law aimed at zeroing out the carbon emissions by 2050. And they're saying that the rulings for future generations are entitled to protection from climate change. I don't know if you guys remember as well. Some of you may be too young to actually remember this, but I remember when I was younger, they talked about global warming. They didn't talk about climate change. They talked about global warming. So now it's not warming anymore. It's climate change. And what's the reason for that? Well, the globe isn't warming anymore. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of that here in the, at the end of the video. No, I'm not going to get in a fight, right? Whether like what's the cause of it, humans, whatever, right? I'll leave that up to you. But I'm just letting you know that, that you know, they, they changed kind of the hot topic on that. And the reason why is because the earth isn't really warming anymore. Some actually are debating that we're actor entering a, a, a cooling cycle. China's top diplomat in Australia is blaming the deterioration of their relations to Australia. They're accusing Australia of economic coercion and provocations in speech after Australia pulled out of their Belt and Road Initiative. In addition to that, in investment news, Alphabet, the owner parent company of Google, had their most profitable quarter ever. They made, uh, let's see here, $17.9 billion dollars their net income jumped 160 percent topping the previous record of 15.2 billion other than that they made about 4.75 billion dollars due to the booming IPO market and the valuation of the startups they had a, a net gain on equity investments of that amount of almost 5 billion Amazon one of the biggest winners as well of the pandemic they posted record profits this week they they estimate that the current operating income is going to be between 4.5 to 8 billion, which includes a 1.5 billion dollar in costs related to the COVID. And an international event, as I mentioned, India with a population of 1.3 billion reported over 100, excuse me, 17 million coronavirus infections with over 195,000 deaths. The new coronavirus infections hit a record high and the infections in the last four hours, 24 hours, excuse me, rose to just under 353,000. Germany, the UK and the US are committed to sending over emergency medical supplies to be able to help them with the pandemic as their health infrastructure, literally their people are being denied entry into hospitals because they just don't have the medical supplies. Other than that, the Biden administration has restricted travel from India due to the situation of the COVID there in India. So as of May 4th, no people from India are going to be able to travel from the US and the coronavirus cases from a week ago are up 26%. 
in India. EU countries agreed this month to, lost, to launch the COVID-19 travel pass. It's going to permit people who have been vaccinated against the disease to enter into Europe. They're also saying that Americans that have been vaccinated are going to be able to enter. People who also have recovered from the infection or have tested negative, they're going to be able to travel more easily as well. And they're saying that their, their medicines agency also has approved the three vaccines that are used in the U.S. Russia, if you remember, there was a bit of a escalation of tensions on the Ukraine border when Russia started to send a massive amount of troops there. Well, that has since died down since Russia has reported to the West that they're now starting to withdraw their troops that are going to go back to their permanent bases. So for now, we've avoided a bit of an escalation there on the Ukrainian border. And Iran and Saudi Arabia are negotiating some form of detente. The two countries have decided to start direct talks in Iraq this month. Both sides are expressing a desire to improve relations and a lot of people are suggesting that the U.S. US is kind of with the nuclear deal, for example, they kind of pushed a little bit of Ron to make sure they make that happen. In unusual facts this week, US based food Domino's Pizza is going to start having autonomous pizza delivery. They're going to send a little car called Neuro, which is a robotics firm. You're going to, you know, the little autonomous car is going to come to your house. You're going to press a little code in the, in the car and then it's going to open up. You're going to take your pizza, close it, and it's going to go right back to the store. Other than that, residents of the U.S. states of Oklahoma and Texas are still recovering Friday from a biblical hailstorm that literally had, it was so powerful and there were such big pieces of hail that it was knocking roofs out. Damaged a ton of cars. The estimated damage is about $3.5 billion. And Sweden, Linden Energy is claiming that it has sold the first oil cargo certified to be carbon neutral. This is what I was mentioning to you before. They're offsetting with tree planting project in Mexico. Germany is reporting in April that it's been the coldest in 104 years. The second coldest since 1881. And the snowiest year since 1986. Further evidence that some an climate analysts are saying that the North Hemisphere is indeed cooling, not warming, like they used to say, right? This is what I mentioned to you guys a moment ago. Giant sinkholes are appearing in Turkey, especially throughout the region where they grow food. Notice the amount of time I mentioned the situation with the food, right? The rivers in Paraguay, the, the huge increase in costs reaching record highs in some of these markets for, you know, soy and wheat and corn. Taiwan, if you remember the diversion of water, the 90% loss of the crops. France last week, if you remember, I reported you how a lot of the wine grapes were taken out from the frost. It's literally just, you know, one, one thing after the other. And I think these things are actually going to get worse in Turkey. They're having giant sinkholes that are appearing throughout the, the growing food area. I don't know the exact area, but essentially they're just literally giant sinkholes that are appearing, which again is going to affect the situation with food. Earthquake swarms hit Lake Tahoe, which are, leads some to suggest that we might see a pretty big earthquake in the next two or three years in, in the Cali not California per se, but the Cascadia region, which goes from, so it goes from Washington all the way down to the top tip of California. It's a, it's a tectonic plate essentially that's in the Pacific Ocean that's huge that can cause a lot of havoc. And also there was an eight, eight, earthquake swarm in that area which leads some analysts to believe that this is getting ready for a big one off of the coast of uh, of the pacific there in the u.s and some of them were 5.4 5.2 and 5.3 even though there were others as well that's the news for this week guys let me know if you guys have any questions don't forget to subscribe we'll see you next week